It's 97 degrees on a summer morning in the suburb of Winter Garden, Florida. 66-year-old mom and homemaker Audrey is trying to coax her babies Cleo and Lacey out of their air-conditioned cage. I want you to come. Four-year-old Lacey is mama's girl. She hates to be left alone. Three-year-old Cleo is the baby of the family and full of mischief. The sisters are used to being spoilt and getting their own way. I don't want to play on that one. I want to play on this one. Where did she go, Lacey? Where did Cleo go? I'm a monkey mom. That's my identity. I don't have an identity. I'm just a monkey mom. They're not animals to me. They're like little hairy people. Audrey's human family consists of two grown-up sons, one of whom, Scott, still lives at home. Audrey adopted her first mon kid, Lacey, four years ago, followed by Cleo a year later. Her husband passed away last year, so now Audrey is head of the interspecies household. I'm fixing breakfast, I'm fixing eggs. By the time they get out, it'll be cool enough for them to eat. I love my girls. They have added so much to my life. I can't imagine life without them. It's just odd. She's hungry. I know you were hungry. You were crying. It's tremendous, the bonding. You can see, I mean, I'm their mother. <laughs> Captive monkeys tend to have their own surrogate mum or stuffed animal. She brought this home when I brought her home when she was two weeks old and she won't part with it. It's a simulation of the birth mother, and it's something for them to hold. It's a security, because even though she clung to me for a year, they still need something when, when you're not there. So this is hers. So, come on. The very first thing that you notice, well, they've stolen from their mothers, and they're put on a surrogate stuffed animal or a towel, some inanimate object. They're supposed to be on their mother's back, and they're running through the forest. So they're now stuck on an inanimate object. So they're rocking, 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 rocking themselves into oblivion. And it's just horrible to see that. That's a terrible sign. Audrey, her son Scott, and mum kids pay a visit to her friend Julie for lunch. They love everything. Everything we eat, they eat. But it's, it's a hard choice because everything is full of sugars and carbohydrates. The favorite foods are nuts, corn on the cob, bacon, spaghetti. Any of the pasta, cooked or uncooked, they love it. Not, not that many, not that many. One. Okay, great. Anything sweet, greasy, or salty. Oh, no sandwich for you, huh? Just, just junk food. Just junk food. Yeah. Well, you're not supposed to be having junk food. A captive monkey's diet should consist of about 70% monkey chow, which is a mix of natural products found in the forest, as well as around 30% fruit and vegetables. What Audrey doesn't realize is that she could be killing her monk kids with love and tortilla chips. In captivity, many people uh, simply don't know what capuchins eat in the wild. So it's not that people mean bad things to happen to their animal, but we do see this kind of uh, epidemic of obesity, diabetes, heart problems, high blood pressure, uh, all sorts of hormonal imbalances in, these, in some of these older pet primates. Audrey has been spoiling her monk kids, but as with a human child, it's hard to say no when they want to share from her plate. Audrey is taking Cleo and Lacey to see Dr. Parrott, an exotic vet, for a checkup. Many vets will not handle primates due to their unpredictable behavior and their tendency to carry and transmit diseases. Although the monkeys are more likely to catch something from humans, as their immune systems are very delicate. Hey, how are you? I'm well, how are you? So, I know. Dr. Parrott needs to listen to Cleo's heartbeat. 
but Cleo gets alarmed. She doesn't like new toys. <laughs> As a pet owner who, who has had multiple species with primates, I don't feel they make good pets for most people. They're worse than children. They're 24-7, and they're an ADHD <coughs> kid all the time. At Lacey's last visit, her blood sugar was elevated. So Dr. Parrott needs to run another test to see if it has improved or become worse, so that she can make her diagnosis. I think it's as hard on me as it is for her. Because I get really stressed out too. It's like it's like your own child, you know, if they hurt, you hurt. Can't help it. It's just it's just a love that you can't explain. Their love is unconditional. I mean, they love me no matter what I do to them or with them or about them, you know because I'm all they have. The vet has news for Audrey. Glucose fasting is 161, which is high. Her fructosamine, which is long-term glucose control, should be 100 or less, is mm -hmm. almost 400. Mm -hmm. So we're not controlling her sugars. It's bad news. Lacey has diabetes, a condition where her blood sugar levels are too high. Dr. Parrott gives her long-term prognosis. Let's try the next three or four weeks. We'll talk, and we're going to try to regulate it orally. It's either that or you're going to lose your monkey eventually because it's going to kill her. The diabetes will kill her. For supper, yeah, tonight they're going to have carbs because we're having spaghetti. Okay. <laughs> but, um, is it whole grain spaghetti? Mm. Whole, whole grain, or is it regular white no, spaghetti? No, it's the regular white tonight, okay. but I usually do you know, the whole grain or the okay. spinach. Audrey has a stark decision to make stop feeding her monkeys the wrong foods or she will kill them um i would not give her pasta tonight i, I really would fill her up on anything you want but not i pasta. can give her salad there we go that evening at dinner here we go, here we go. cleo That's a spaghetti girl. How about some dressing? Mm. You like dressing. You would rather have the dressing and not the salad. Pasta for you. You've had enough. How about some salad? It has dressing. Here. I think you had enough of those too. No! No!